Okay, so this is just a bit of concept review to all get us sort of all on the same page for doing a little bit more interesting or advanced work in class. Uh, first, I'm going to talk a little bit about dimensional analysis and then talk about sort of the common ways that we talk about chemical and pollutant concentration. So first, I'm going to talk about dimensional analysis. It's also been called, I believe, the factor label method, just to sort of reacquaint us with what are dimensions and units, which is what this table here is showing us. So sort of the fundamental dimensions are things like mass, capital M, length, capital L, time, capital T in this situation, and then things like temperature, amount, and charge. So we won't be dealing too much with charge in this class, mainly these top five. Um, so units are things like grams for mass, meters or kilometers for length, hours, minutes, seconds for time, degrees Celsius or Kelvin for temperature. Um, if you're sort of forgetting what degrees Kelvin are, you pretty much just take whatever degrees Celsius you have, for example, 20, and then add 273 to that number to get degrees Kelvin. So if you had 20 degrees Celsius, you would add 273 and get 293 degrees Kelvin. So I just want to spend a minute reminding everybody what moles are. Um, if you reach back into your chemistry <laughs> background. Uh, so here is a question. Maybe you want to think about it for a minute. What exactly is a mole? Um, right, and now I've got this song stuck in my head, and I have also dated myself. Perhaps nobody knows what I'm talking about. But anyway, a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of anything, really. In this case, we're usually going to be talking about molecules or atoms. So here's some examples. One mole of ammonium, which is one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms, has 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules and weighs about 17 grams. So one mole of ammonium has one mole of nitrogen. That's because there is only one N in this molecules, only one nitrogen, and it has three moles of hydrogen. You can see that because there are three hydrogen atoms in this molecule. So this is a concept that we're going to be using uh, quite a bit in some of our problems, sort of the, the translation between a mole of a molecule and then how many moles of the individual atoms are in that mole of a molecule. Okay, a reminder of what molarity is. It is the moles of solute per liter of solution. Solute is just whatever it is you're dissolving in, usually water. So here is a quick example for you to think about. What is the molarity of 0.75 moles of a solute dissolved in 2.5 liters of solution? So maybe pause it and just try to figure out which of these answers is right. Okay, so hopefully you at least thought about it, kind of have an idea of which of these is right. The right answer is A, 0.3, or a molarity of 0.3. And it's pretty straightforward. It's not a trick question. You divide 0.75 moles by the amount of liters of solution, 2.5 liters, and you get 0.3. Okay, so all the other dimensions that we'll be talking about, things like area and volume, are products of these fundamental dimensions. So what exactly am I talking about? Things like velocity, area, volume, and density. These are all dimensions that we're going to be dealing with a lot in this class. So velocity, then, is just length divided by, ta by time. And, or another way of writing that is length times t to the negative 1. And all this negative 1 refers to is the idea that, in this case, you would be multiplying length times 1 over t. So this negative 1 means that t is in the denominator of a fraction. Hopefully that's some, some quick review for you there. So area is length times length, or length squared. You're used to thinking of length times width. In this case, they're both lengths, so uh, we're keeping it in those units of fundamental dimensions. So perhaps you can see where we're going for volume, length cubed. And then density is mass per volume. So that's mass divided by volume, or mass times length to the negative 3 volume. Okay, so chemical or pollutant concentrations, and this is just sort of to get us all on the same page for how we talk about concentrations of 
pollutants in air, soil, and water. So a concentration, just straight definition, is the mass of a chemical in a volume or mass of air, water, or soil. So pretty basic. So when we're talking about concentrations in water, we're usually talking about mass per volume. That's the most common unit that you'll see. Things like milligrams per liter, micrograms per liter, um, all of these things here are then just translated into sort of that exponential style of unit. So you'll see both of these. They're both very common, either using a slash to denote dividing or to use this negative one exponent to let you know that this is in the denominator. Okay, they, they, you'll also see parts per million uh, very commonly when talking about concentrations in water. And there's a video and problem on how we go from milligrams per liter to mass per mass to be in parts per million. So that is something that you should go and check out. Okay, so how do we measure our measure constant or talk about concentrations in soil? And you will commonly hear about mass per volume. This is something that you'll see a lot, especially in sort of ecological literature. But there are some problems with this. So if you're looking at this, this picture down here, for example, this is the same volume, same size box for A and same size box for B, but which of these has more soil? So you can think about that for a moment, pause it, or just decide you already know. Okay, so A has more soil, but it's the same volume. So this is a problem that soil can compress, it can compact. If you drive a tractor over it, as they've done in this picture, you've suddenly got much more soil in the same volume. So that's not always informative for people when you're trying to clean up a site or figure out how much pollution there is in a, in a given area. So more frequently, you'll see mass per mass. So mass of chemical per mass of, of soil. And this is pretty straightforward. You've got mass per mass, so it's pretty easy to turn that into a parts per million equation. So you've got a milligram of chemical and a kilogram of soil. A kilogram is um, a million milligrams, so one milligram per million milligrams of soil so is one part per million. Okay, like soil, air is also compressible, but it's highly compressible. So it's so compressible that mass per volume is really just not a useful way to talk about concentrations in air. So much more frequently you'll see mass of chemical per mass air, but even more frequently than that you'll see this turned into the amount of chemical or number of molecules, for example, for the same amount of air or amount or number of air molecules. And frequently, most frequently, you'll see this in terms of parts per million or parts per billion. And in, in this case they're talking about the number of chemical molecules divided by all of the other air molecules, the amount of, or the number of all of the other air molecules. So parts per million would be, for example, moles of a chemical in the air divided by a million moles of all the other air molecules. Parts per billion, the same thing, but billion moles of all the other air molecules. And this is essentially what you see when you hear, pe or what you see or what you hear when you, when you see people talking about um, parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And this figure here is, is, was taken from just a couple days ago, and you can see this is the first time in history that we've spent a substantial portion of our year above 400 parts per million CO2, and that's probably something that you all already heard about this summer, but it was quite a landmark. Okay, so that kind of wraps up this little review. Um, Go ahead and watch the background videos, particularly if you need to. Some of them, if you already know how to do dimensional analysis, you can do the pre-lecture assignment. And if that's easy for you, <laughs> that's fine. Um, but go ahead, watch whatever videos you need to watch and do the practice, um, practice problems on Blackboard. And then we'll be doing more of an in-class application of this, of this knowledge, something a little more interesting, I hope, uh, on in-class on Thursday. So thanks.